Welcome. Here's a fun result attributed to Viviani, a late uh, 17th century Italian mathematician. He claims the following. If you take in the equilateral triangle and then choose any point you like inside that triangle, let's call it P, and measure its three perpendicular di distances to the sides. So his distance A to the bottom side, his distance B to the left side, and his distance C to the right side. Then the value A plus B plus C, the sum of the three distances, he claims will always be the same, no matter which point you choose inside the triangle. Choose a point over here, these three distances, A plus B the same, is the same value as the previous case, did over here, and so on. But he goes a little bit further and says this distance, this sum, is always equal to the height of the triangle. So it's known as Viviani's theorem. So let me briefly prove why that's true, and then we'll talk about some fun generalizations. Okay, here he goes. Why is this possibly true? Well, let's take a point P, and, whoops, what am I doing? And I uh, use it to calculate the area of the triangle. And I'm going to do it in the following way. So here's my original point P. I'll use a messy diagram here. Uh, let's assume my equilateral triangle has side length x. And let's call the height of the triangle h. Of course, I could work out what h is in terms of x, but let's just leave it like that for the moment. All right, one way to work at the area of the triangle is to divide the triangle into three pieces as follows. Whoops, very funky little pieces there. The shade of triangle has base x and height a, so its area is half a x. This second piece here has base x and height c, half c x, and this remaining piece, this remaining triangle here, is base x, height b, half b x. So the area of the triangle is a half a x plus half b x plus half c x. Or I could have worked out the area of the triangle by just looking at the whole thing. The whole triangle has base x and height h, so it's also half x h. Well, I've worked out the area of the same, two, same area in two different ways. This must be equal. This equality is valid. I multiply through by 2, divide by x, and I'm left with a plus b plus c must be the height of the triangle, no matter where this point p is initially located inside the triangle. Grand. Well, the sort of fun thing I like to do is ask, why do we need to stick inside the triangle? What if we let the point P wander outside? Wouldn't that just be devilish of us? Let's do it. So here's my equilateral triangle again. And suppose this time we chose the point P to say, lie over here. We still measure the three perpendicular distances. Here's the bottom one to the first side, that's length A. Here's the one to length B, uh, length B to the left side. And the height to, uh, the distance to length is the third side, C. I claim no matter where B is, P is placed, A plus B minus C now equals the height of the triangle. Well, I said no matter where it's placed, you've got to be a little bit careful. First of all, you can actually follow exactly the same proof as before. We can work at the area of the triangle two different ways. And I'll do the same trick. I can work at the area of this piece. Half x, uh, half uh, base times height is A. I can work at the area of this piece. Plus half base x height b, but I've overshot the area by this amount. So I need to subtract half x times c, and that would be the area of the triangle, half xh. Well, there we are. So if I allow myself to subtract areas, I can actually generalize the result to get that, at least for some region outside the triangle, this is a constant value, a plus b minus c is the height of the triangle. Well, let me be a little more precise here what I mean by whereabouts outside the triangle I can go. What I need to do, and I'll leave it to you to verify the details. If I extend the size of the triangles as follows, there's one side, here's the second side, and here's the third side. We showed in the middle of the triangle a plus b plus c is constant. Over here a plus b minus c is constant. I claim over here a minus b plus c is constant, and in this region a plus b minus c is constant. And in one of these regions, like this one, I claim negative a plus b minus c is constant. Then I'll leave it for you to figure out what's going on here and what's going on here, but you can guess it's going to be one positive and two negative. So there it is. There's, there's Viviani's theorem taken outside the triangle. And I'll give you additional piece of homework. Who says we just stick with equilateral triangles? What's the version of Viviani's theorem for a square? If I take a point inside the square, I guess it's kind of obvious that it's four perpendicular distances, a plus b plus c, plus d is going to be constant. But if I let this point wander outside the square, or if I work with a regular pentagon, or regular hexagon, or a regular n-gon of any size value n, uh, what's the appropriate generalization of Viviani's theorem? Well, that sounds like a lot of fun. All right, thanks very much.